The top is coated in linseed oil and titanium white. And I've just taken a little bit of gray color, a little bit of bluey gray that I've mixed up. Oil paints, you see, we're gonna put up here a nice sky. All right, this is all dry because we're gonna put wet paint on top of wet paint on top of wet paint. So the drier that is, the better. But up here, a little bit of linseed oil and white, just mixed together, about 50-50, will help us blend color into the sky so there's no harsh edges up there all right now a little bit down there we're gonna have a few clouds in this go straight over the mountain range as well and that's just painted with the same color as the sky down here you can see in the water okay we are gonna have either a path or a water course there don't know yet so i just put on a few colors and basically blended them in all right, so with that on, I can't see how strong that is. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more of the blue colours. Okay, and put that up there. And change the flavour of the sky a little bit. Up in the corner. I like stuff in the corner. Darker in the corners draws your eye into the middle. Okay, we've got some big trees as well. Scots pines, I think. I think we'll have. Anyway. Well, I crack on with the sky. You like this video and subscribe if you've not done so already. For clouds, it couldn't be simpler. All I'm doing is taking a lot of paint on one corner of a fan brush and I'm just tapping in, just playing the drum basically. I've gone on with white, then a lighter gray, and then I'm just darkening it off a little bit more as we get towards the mountain peaks and then just merge the colours together. So I'm gonna darken it off a little bit more now, with a little bit more of the darker colour. On a really deep storm shadow under this cloud here, uh, full of snow. It's gonna get us, it's gonna be cold, cold air blowing in from the north, over the top of the mountain. It comes down there like so. And then onto this one here as well. Little paint, little paint. There we go. Just tease them together. And we will blend all this as well. Make sure that there's no ash edges left up here. There we go. A little bit of black and burnt umber in there as well. And all I'm going to do is take this very soft blender brush and just tease it all into the into the sky. Because this is nice and easy because of the amount of linseed oil that we've got up here. All right, it's quite thick as well. A lot of texture in that in that cloud up there. I'm working on the darker parts first on all the mat. Uh, uh, sorry, all the clouds. Then I'll creep up into the next layer, and then I'll go into the next layer as well. Then, then I'm not making making uh, mud basically i'm not taking some of this into this and all that lot if you know what i mean if that makes a bit of sense one layer at a time just tease it together circular motions look like big churning clouds yeah look at that big storm clouds coming alive right before us we just had to put some color down first didn't we there we go, same up there, and work along like that. One of the easiest ways to make a cloud. With that blended out in places, what you can do is take a little bit of white on the palette knife and just pick out the very top highlighted parts of the cloud and just push them in. And it won't stay white. It'll, it'll instantly turn a, a bluey grey colour. That kind of method there will give us a nice, a nice little glow right up there. Just a tiny bit of colour. Uh, do we want another bit there? Maybe, maybe. Like that. Just push it in, push it in. Let's try his hand at one of these mountains, okay? So just a little bit of a grey colour and... I'm just going to put that in here now where I've got some linseed oil across here and I'm not really too concerned about it because the tops of the mountains we could actually blend out and and move and lose into the uh, into the uh, the clouds and the, the, the fog and everything but I'm just going to put in a little bit of 
a grey browny colour, stony colour. That's just up here. Right now, I think this one will come in front. So we'll just work on this one at the moment. And we may even grab a little bit of the greys as well. Just, just a little bit like that. And then just tease it over. So we want a nice little stone colour. And we'll put very little paint on. And then we can come back in and squeeze in. Squeeze in some snow between the stones. Now you could paint this with the with the uh, the palette knife, but sometimes I think the palette knife just gives too much contrast. Really, I'm using a little blender fan brush for this. Just throw in some stony colours, greys and browns. Basically, it'll come down here right over the cloud like that a little bit of a base anyway for the snow to sit now where's the highlight well the highlight be up here in the shining down so maybe this side's going to get some sun maybe it would look like that wouldn't it you know already now there we go i can even Blend that away, take off all the lumps and bumps. And then grab a little bit more colour. I'm going to grab a touch of the darker greys. And push that about. Put some deep shadows. It looks almost black, but it's a, it's a brownie bluey grey. And there we go, another one there. And just keep building these up till we get something. That we're happy with you can actually use the knife to put on a little bit of color and then just push it in i do like this little trowel knife rather than the standard knife let me grab one one like that because it allows you to actually get really onto the canvas and put a little bit of something down just little tiny bits and then just blend it in in there like that i don't know if that's the right direction but we'll try it and if you get like a little bit of really blurred out color that's that's fine as well because obviously there's going to be clouds all across the top as well now this is just a little bit of gray blue on the shadow side i put a little bit of deeper blue on with the brushes as you saw earlier a little bit of gray blue now just for the shadow work the shadow side Whereas we've gone with a really pale grey, not white, we're not, we're not having it white. Okay, it's too far away. So that's that one done there. Right, so I'll show you a little bit more down here, just push on. Very little paint and then just merge it about. And it works well because we've only got really a very thin, not thinned out paint, just a very thin amount of paint underneath it if we had to do that up here we'd be just pulling sludge and muck and dirt all around all around the uh the canvas and we don't want that now i'm going to use a tip just to blend a little bit of this up we're going to have a little bit of mist between this this range and this one right down here a little bit of color a little bit of mist and fog just in there like that there like so good so you can see i've put like a range of different colors obviously shadow colors on the shadow side and a little bit of gray lighter gray on the highlight side let's just get a little bit of pale gray almost white on this palette knife very little amount okay and we can just start by picking out some of the snowy highlights now you can use this like a a normal wet on wet mountainy kind of uh mountain you know but i like to really just put it on a little at a time okay just a little bit like that next to no paint on the knife now and then we can just start to flatten it off 
okay just flatten the snow off and mix it in there like that i'll just demonstrate on this little area for you come down and get a little bit of that same color just like that and then you can pick out a little bit of a stronger area there like so and it comes down maybe there like that and then we'll just build on this and tease it into the composition tease it into the mountain it wants to be stronger than this one okay stronger than that one a bit of paint there down like so like this and it comes down there like that and of course the more you push and allow it to mix with that under color the, the you know like the darker it will get okay maybe a little bit around there across invest in one of these folks really do because it's 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 perfect for, for a whole range of things could do a full painting of this that's probably what we might do one day let me know if you want to see a full palette knife painting uh, i want to do the whole thing does it come down it does now it comes down there like that there we go so down here we're going to put some trees out i have put some trees just on a fan brush i've got a really muddy greeny pale greeny bluey color okay and then i'm just going to touch on can you see that just touch on anywhere you want a tree line just like so put them in and then just gently lift up okay lift up lift up lift up okay once you've got them in grab a smaller uh, blender brush with a little touch of pale color on and then we can just blend them out just touch on the base and then just blend them out like so then you can build layer after layer remember shadows and and highlights you won't see individual trees though you can try and pick out little bits of tops of trees just there you'll just see clumps of color really as you go along so that's what we're going to do until we get to about this point here i think maybe a little bit bigger there so let's let's i'm just going to grab a touch more of the greeny browny pale color and just touch on and go up like that brand new brand new fan brush brand new okay and then just lift up lift up lift up lift up lift up and then that might come down there actually like so very little paint very little paint i want to grab a bit of blue as well picked up a little bit of pale blue and just merge that together flick straight up there we go there like that see that one's in shadow there i don't know what's causing the shadow but it's in shadow like that and then just grab your brush maybe put a bit more of the pale gray color on and then just tap the base tap the base and then just tease it out remember most of this is dry so we can really push this paint around i think we're going to start to get a little bit bigger as they come towards us as well we want to see that don't we some bigger trees there we go so we're a little bit of a funny angle but i just want to show you how to paint some of the easiest ways of painting fir trees that you can do i've got a little tiny brush and it's a dagger brush it's pretty worn out but i'm just touching on and giving us some indications of distant trees they're a little bit closer to us i keep going down and reloading the brush as i reload every time i'll change change 
the flavour of the brush. Now keep keep these upright. Don't make them fall over. Okay, like so. So I've got blues, browns, greens, obviously, in there. Maybe even now and again a bit of black. And that will give us some some little trees down there. Then all we need to do then, I've got a big filbert brush with a touch of white paint. And I'm just going to sculpt the land that's just underneath it to how I want it. I don't really want massive green shadows in the snow. So if we pull it out thin enough, we can come back with the palette knife eventually and put some some thicker snow down. So there like that, we've got a nice little grove of trees. Right, with most of the trees in place, we need to figure out what we're doing down here. Is this water? Is it a path? Is it frozen pond? Who knows? I certainly don't know yet. It's going the way of a frozen river. But I could bring something down there and captivate captivate it i don't know what would you do if it were your composition i don't know uh, but all i am doing is really scrubbing in a little bit of blue and white just like that i am gonna have a bank there i'm not sure if i want a bigger tree on that i'm not don't know yet i have absolutely no idea and that's the that's the beauty of painting i suppose we can just change as mind made flow but anyway because i think it's going to be a frozen mm, stream river or something like that i'm keeping the strokes as horizontal as i possibly can because if i start to turn them like that it will go into a path if that makes sense right that's got a coating of oil oil paint on there now now it's time to make up his mind. And we will have a bank here and maybe another tree there. I don't know. I really just don't know. Not a good advert for the show, is it? Now you can see that I've got a few evergreen trees that are sitting just underneath this, this tissue. And it's just absorbing the oil. You can just see all the oil coming off all this tissue there. Let's get that out of the way. Just down there. Let's put an evergreen tree here. Just similar to what we've done there. Okay. Lots of paint on the paintbrush. This is sap green. It's got a little bit of Prussian blue. A little bit of black. And some burnt umber. Okay. And I'm going to start the tree. I think. I want it about there. I don't want it right on the edge. But there it'll do. Okay. And I'm just going to go down. And guide where I want it. Oh no. Right through my little glade. Just there. Oh, I liked that little spot. Anyway. It's there. Okay, that's a starter for 10. That's a starter for 10. So reload the brush and sharpen it off. And just like you would do a normal, say a normal, uh, just a, an evergreen tree. I'm just going to flick some of this in. Okay, and go a bit crazy. Go a bit up and down with it. Okay, get some more paint. Plenty of paint. You cannot have enough paint, but do not. Do not thin the paint. Don't put any thinners in it or anything like that. Don't put any, oh no, over those little trees there as well. Okay. Anyway, we're doing it now. We're committed. We're locked in, as they say. We're committed. And we're just going to fill all this bottom part. So as I reload the brush, I, I get a little bit more darker colour, a little bit more blue, a little bit more black. And just put some stuff down there. Really plough it on. Drop the brush and then we're going to get one of these lint-free tissues. Now you can pick these up from a hardware store or from a, uh, I don't know, an automotive store or anything like that. Well, these these are basically what you would wash your hands with and dry your hands. Okay, I, I pick them up off the market, a uh, little flea store or something like that. And they're only they're only about five pound a pack or five pound for two packs or something like that. I can't remember. It's not it's not expensive, but the lint free, so none of the fibres from the tissue go on your com composition. Okay, so look at it. It's just drawing the oil straight off there and straight off down there. Look at that. And when you peel it off, let's get rid of these now. After a couple of minutes, look at all the paint, all that paint there. You're going to be mixing that with the highlights and the shadowy colours that we're going to put on. 
so we can get rid of all that look at that you will blur some of it and it will pale it off as well but but it's uh, it's okay it's okay right we can hit some of this with a little bit of highlight but i don't want much because i think it doesn't need much highlight in this in this painting thinned out green paint it's light green i could go a little bit lighter if i wanted to i'm just pulling out from this this tree a little bit of highlight work remember the highlights coming from this side so we're going to get a little bit of something remember as well the uh, the branches that will hang down in front like this one down at the bottom here will catch a little bit of light okay and then just put some stuff out there as well i don't like to paint anymore um just pure fan brush um or, or flat brush uh trees you know i like i've got plenty of brushes so why not use them all and it gives a little bit more of extra detail that you can do it's not much harder you know it's, it's fairly once you get the hang of it it's fairly simple but if you are struggling with it just watch this little video that's up in the top corner you know right we're going to go for this one i'm going to pale it off a touch with a little bit of a little bit of white paint okay um because this is further back not for much further but it is a bit further back and i'm just going to hit some of these with a little bit of pale it's almost like a pale yellowy color and maybe it goes all the way up there this is in the front so it's going to get a little bit of light and then once you've got it off the brush just get rid of some of that excess tease it back into the tree you know let, let it blend and mix you know all the way across there and letting the brush just jiggle and wiggle and then maybe a little bit that's something in the front there less paint on the brush it's a little bit of a different color okay and then just keep going till you get all your trees done there we go and you can even put a little bit of a, a blue tint on the dark side a little bit of reflected light maybe something down there maybe like that so it's catching the light a little bit on there and we've we've got it we've cracked it yeah crack these trees Let's take a little thin flat brush and just dip it in some thinners and wipe off the excess obviously and then just touch on and just glide across the ice or the water and it will start to cut through you can see it there it will start to cut through the oil and the paint that's on and give us little little sheens of ripples and stuff look it's cutting through it might take a second or two to do but it will do it keep it as flat and as parallel to the base as you possibly can and again if you go a little bit wibbly wobbly with it don't worry about it you can just take your big brush and just just blend it out but you can create all kinds of sheens and lights that that, that go all across the water just like this there I picked up a little bit of color as I'm dragging it out the more you do the more watery this will look a bit of green got in there there's a bit of green up there so it will be reflected won't it happy days I'm just tapping in a few low-lying clouds just in between the mountains there just missed a, a little bit of something up and I think we have got a little bit of a, a finished painting. Well, this is a beautiful one. It's very, very cold, very, very wintry. First winter. If you like this one, give it a big old thumbs up. If you try this one, share it with us. If you've not subscribed, you know what to do, folks. Until next time, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Happy days. I'll see you later.